QuickBooks Online 2024. Set up 30 day free trial to practice with bank feeds. Get ready and some coffee because we get things done on schedule with QuickBooks Online 2024. Whenever first a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. For attempting to practice, to learn any kind of software such as QuickBooks Online, one of the first obstacles we have to overcome is how can we get access to the software possibly for free and in a format best suited to the practice we would like to do. To think about this question, I think it's useful to categorize software this way. Some types of software, once you get access to it, you can create multiple files from it. Other types of software, every time you create a new file, you have to pay for a new piece of the software. For example, when we think about desktop type software, such as office desktop products, such as Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, once we have access to the software, we can create multiple Word documents. We can make multiple Excel workbooks from that piece of software. That makes it easy to practice with those softwares once we have access to them. Other types of software, often online software, often web-based software, such as QuickBooks Online, require us to purchase another piece of software every time we want to start a new company file. We can also compare this to the old QuickBooks desktop version, which is still in practice. QuickBooks Enterprise is still going. QuickBooks Desktop Pro, there's questions about how long they're going to keep QuickBooks Desktop Pro, but we won't get into that now. The point being that with the desktop version, it's similar to Microsoft Office products like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, in that once you have access to the software, you can create multiple company files. With QuickBooks Online, we have to purchase another piece of software for each new company file that we create. That actually makes it a little bit easier to practice with something like the QuickBooks desktop version. And we have a little bit different of an obstacle to think about when we're going to the QuickBooks Online versions. There are tools provided by Intuit, however. So let's give a list of some of these tools. Noting that one of the main problems we have is that even if we're using our own company file, that's not the best file to practice with because we don't want to just enter transactions into our own data in order to practice entering transactions. So we need some kind of sandbox uh, in order to practice with, and here are basically the options for that. So we have number one, we've got the free 30 day trial period. So you might be able to set up a trial period if you're interested in testing out uh, QuickBooks Online. So we'll take a look at that option, noting that when you're looking at a free 30-day trial, the benefit of getting access to the software in that way is there's nothing in it at that point in time. That's a great practicing tool to, to do the startup process, to set up the software from scratch. 
However, oftentimes you're in a situation where you don't want to practice setting up software from scratch. You want data that's already in the system. And for that, the best version is the free test drive. So you can search online for QuickBooks Online test drive. We'll take a look at this, or you can also find it in the Intuit web page. This file already has stuff in it, so you can practice generating reports from a file that already has items in it. Now the free student version is basically kind of a variant of the free 30 day trial. You might, if you're a student, I believe at an accredited institution, although you can take a look and do some more research uh, with QuickBooks on what would qualify, you might be able to get access to uh, the software for a longer period of time possibly, and possibly even get practice materials uh, in, in that situation. So if you're in that situation, you can look into that in more detail. And then obviously we can think about if we can get discounts talking to uh, QuickBooks online distributors and CPAs and see if we can get uh, discounts on software if we would like to be purchasing the software. Obviously, if we're practicing with the software to see if it's something that we want to purchase, then these tools could be useful as well. So let's take a look at a few of them. Here we are in the Intuit website. So intuit.com. We have different softwares up top. This is where I like to start instead of trying to go directly to the QuickBooks website because I think this site uh, is, is always the same starting point. And then I go to QuickBooks here and that's the software owned by Intuit. And then I tend to go all the way to the bottom of the software because this sales page will change. Uh, but if you go to the bottom of the page, it has the products which have been there for a long time. And then I can select precisely the product I wanna look at, which is QuickBooks Online. So if we go into QuickBooks Online, you can see up top, they have the try for 30 days here. If you scroll down and look at the pricing options, they also have the toggle here. We'll come back to that in a second. And I believe on this page, if you scroll down, you'll also find uh, the test drive. So we'll scroll down and say, do, 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 do. There it is, here's the test drive. Now this page might change over time, so it might be easier when you're looking for the test drive to just type into your search engine, QuickBooks Online test drive into your favorite browser. And then look for the option that has intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. Go into that file and then I would choose, I'm choosing the United States version of the software, verifying that I'm not a robot and continue. Now this file is great for practice, but it will reset all the time after you enter something into the, into the worksheets. But you can see here that in the reports, it already has things in it. So if I go into the balance sheet, there's already data in it. Whereas if I start a new file from scratch, it's not gonna have any data in it. So this would be a great tool to kind of mirror as though we're going into a new job or something like that where the file is already set up and I wanna practice using uh, the data sets that have already been set up. However, it's often really useful to look at the underlying foundational items in the setup process because that helps you understand what the journal entries are doing, what, what the foundation those journal entries are laying on are uh, and if you're a bookkeeper, then setting up the new company file is often what ends up <laughs> going to be a main, main kind of part of the job. So for that, the 30 day trial would be a great tool to practice with. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to close this out. And remember, even if you have your own company file, then again, the problem is that you don't want, really want to practice on your own company file, right? Because, because you know, you don't want to practice data input. If you want to test out connecting to the bank feeds, but you're not sure if you want to do that, then you might not want to do that in the company file that you're currently using, because if it doesn't work out, then it might be an issue. If you're trying to connect an app that you think sounds like it could be a useful tool, but you're worried about it, you'd like to test it, then again, you don't have that same kind of backup option typically with the online, although they are making some changes to that that you might have with like a desktop. So what I'm going to do here is go to the to the 30 day trial version here, and then I'm going to toggle this on. So remember, if I toggle this on, it's going to scare us because it's going to increase all the prices. So I'm going to toggle this on. It increases the prices. But the, the idea with a 30 day trial would be that I'm testing it out. You probably don't want to be purchasing it at the end of the 30 day trial and paying the $90 and and you 
you probably don't maybe want to be totally committed to this uh, software when you're on the 30 day trial, right? You wanna test it out and run two different softwares parallel or run a practice problem in the 30 day trial. And then after you think it's a, it's a way to go, you might then look into the purchasing process, possibly looking into seeing if you can get discounts at that time. So I'm gonna go ahead and say free 30 day trial and choose the plan. And so it has uh, the payroll options here as well. Now note that payroll is an add on uh, feature. So you could, I believe still get the 30 day trial with the payroll without being charged uh, with the payroll. We're not going to be using uh, the payroll in our case. So we don't really need to add uh, the payroll for our practice problem with the bank feeds. We'll, we will discuss some components of payroll and how payroll might work into or fit into or complicate uh, the bookkeeping process with our, with our bank feed example. Uh, but we're not going to get into detail on the payroll. And we'll talk about different options for payroll and whatnot. But just note that when you think about payroll, you don't really have to, to select the payroll right when you set up the file because you could upgrade the file at a later point in time, uh, oftentimes. And you also really want to think about what's the best way to set up your payroll, trying to get, get it set up properly uh, from the start of when you start payroll. Do you want to do it within QuickBooks or do you want to do it in some other uh, with a third party provider. So I'm going to go next. And then, uh, so then it has our login for the free 30 day trial here. So if you don't have an account, then you can create an account. Even if you have an account, you might be able to still get the 30 day trial because you're attempting to, to practice with a new company file. Now, obviously, if you're giving them any payment information, like a credit card or PayPal or something, uh, then you want to make sure that you cancel it after <laughs> before the 30 days if you don't want to get charged, if you don't want to continue with it after that point in time. Okay, so then I'm going to put an address here. I'm just going to put an address in Beverly Hills, 9505. I'm kind of making up an address. Gloamin Drive, uh, Beverly Hills, or let's say 90210. Beverly Hills, California. So we're going to say that we're in California. The address uh, is going to be useful possibly uh, for you because if you're doing something like sales tax or anything like that, then that'll typically be based on the location where in the California sales tax is a is is something on the state and local uh, level. So so you 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 could try not to put an address in there but the address might be necessary for certain types of things, like I say, such as the sales tax. Now we're gonna go through a little setup interview process before we get the QuickBooks file set up, which can be a little bit scary at first because we might think, hey, look, if I get this incorrect, my whole QuickBooks file is going to be messed up. But that's not usually the case because a lot of the information in this interview process might be more for internal purposes rather than having a big impact on the file that will be created, number one. And number two, because some of the options QuickBooks will ask you to set up, such as if you want to connect apps or if you want to have some kind of payments set up or if you want to be connecting to the bank feeds even, are things that you don't have to set up in this interview process. You could skip those items and set them up at a later point in time. It's not like you, you have to do it now or you lose it. So don't worry too much about that. We're gonna skip through some of those items, including the bank feed set up, and then show you how to set up the bank feeds once we're in the QuickBooks file. Okay, so it says, welcome. We're glad you're here. Here's what uh, we'll do today. So tell us about your business. Get expert help if you'd like. Set up uh, what you're here for. So that's what I want to do. Set up what we're here for. So what do you call your business? We'll use this to get you started. So the company name would be something, of course, that might be populated on forms that might be going external to the business, such as invoices and estimates, for example. So I'm going to say it's a bank feed practice file for our purposes here because that's uh, what we're gonna be using it for. I believe this is more for internal use. How have you been managing your finances? No matter where you're coming from, we're here to help. So nothing, I'm just getting started. 
uh, uh, Peachtree, Sage, Peachtree, Spreadsheets, QuickBooks Desktop, other QuickBooks software, and other. So note, if you were coming from another accounting software, then you have to think about how you want to be transferring the data into the new QuickBooks software. Your general options being that you can try to somehow import all of the prior data into the new QuickBooks software so that you can still basically run reports and see information in the past. However, you might not want to do that for multiple reasons. It might be more difficult. It might mess up the transactions uh, in the, in the uh, sorting process going from one to the other. And it might be a good opportunity to clean up your books as you're going from one software to the other. So your other option might be to say, hey, look, I'm just going to enter the beginning balances as of the, this point in time going forward, typically wanting to include an entire year in one software so that you can basically create financial statements from one software, possibly to help you use your for your taxes out of one software and therefore possibly needing to run two softwares parallel to each other. In other words, if you're starting in February, you might want to to try to enter the books into your new software for January and February, even though you already have that information in the prior software so that you, you can run parallel for a certain amount of time and have one year's worth of data in the new software. Okay, if Peachtree was the old uh, competitor uh, to QuickBooks Desktop for a long point of time and then it went to Sage uh, 50, so a, so a lot of people might still be uh, using uh, Peachtree or Sage. So that's a common competitor. And now the online version is trying to get people to move from the desktop version to the online version. So you might have some more resources with those two options possibly to try to get the information from like the desktop to the online. We have other courses or sections on that if you want to dive into that in more detail. We're just going to start from scratch in our case because we want to start the setup process from scratch. So is bank feed practice file your main source of income? We'll use this information to get you started. Now, I'm going to say no, and it's kind of like, well, why do you need to know that QuickBooks? Is that really going to help up the help me set up the file? I doubt it. Sounds like internal information, right? I think they want that for their purposes. So how long has bank fee practice file been in business? Again, probably not uh, useful for the setting up of the file, probably information that QuickBooks is gathering about us. So what kind of business is this? Tell us, uh, tell us how your business is set up. So is it an LLC? Now we're talking in the United States about different entity types. So from an accounting standpoint, all entities are basically thought of as separate from the individual, even a sole proprietor, but they have different liability perspectives related to them and uh, depending on the different file, you know, entities and uh, different, different ownership structures for a partnership versus a sole proprietorship versus a company versus an S corporation and so on. So I'm going to say, no, it's not an LLC. And then is it a sole proprietor? That would be one person, a partnership, two or more people, uh, non-profit uh, organization. So those are organizations that pretend like it's not about the money when, you know, it's basically about the money. And then the S corporation is a, a type of entity that's a corporation that has flow through to try to have tax implication, liability implications, the standard C corporation. I'm not sure. We're going to go with the sole proprietor. Again, don't worry about this too much here this might have some impact on the tax accounts that you set up but even that i don't think is all that uh useful it's not going to have an impact on the chart of accounts i don't believe as that you would think it would because you would think it would change the general ledger accounts but i think quickbooks just tries to throw in some massive chart of accounts as a starting chart of accounts no matter what you put here so uh there we go so what's your industry so start typing and select the industry. So we can select the industry. And again, you would think the industry would have an impact on like the general ledger. I don't think it does though, but I'm gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick a generic, all other miscellaneous store retailers uh, so that I have like a store situation. So if they did change the chart of accounts, uh, you would think they would give me inventory and cost to get sold. But again, I don't think they do. I think they're just gonna give me some massive chart of accounts no matter what I put here. So it probably doesn't matter that much. So what's your main role at bank feed practice? So 
uh, owner, employee, uh, bookkeeper, accountant, other, I'm going to say owner, probably doesn't matter to the bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is going to be the same. The file is going to basically be the same. They probably want that for their own internal purposes to, to, so they know everything about you. So who works at this business? So help us understand who is part of the team. So we've got uh, the business of one, contractors I plan to hire in the future, employees, other. I'll say I plan to hire in the future. Possibly this probably doesn't matter as well. They're trying to see if they can upsell you to payroll, you would think here. So we're going to say, okay, there's that. So does a bookkeeper help uh, with your books? If so, we can connect them to your account. So I'm going to say no for now, which means they're probably going to, they might try to sell me a bookkeeper, right? They might recommend a bookkeeper. You would think we can take bookkeeping off your plate. So our QuickBooks Live, QuickBooks will bring your, uh, your post books up to date and keep them that way. So categorize transactions, reconcile your accounts and run reports, share insights about your business. Want to learn more, more about QuickBooks Live bookkeeping? We'll help you decide if QuickBooks Live bookkeeping is right for you. So we're going to say, no, thank you. They're trying to upsell us to do our bookkeeping for us. That's nice. But so what apps do you use for your business? So here's another place where you might say, hmm, if I, if I skip this, then I might be missing out on these apps. But don't worry, you can add the apps later. So the major apps, PayPal is a pretty neat app, but it's really a connection kind of to a bank feed. So you can, so it's basically a bank feed kind of thing, but they give you a little bit different of a layout with the app, which is pretty neat. Uh, and then if you have a, like a Shopify or Square or Amazon or eBay, these are the other uh, stores if you're doing uh, 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 an e-store or something like that. We have another course or section on that if you want to look into those uh, in more detail. But I'm going to skip it for now. And uh, what do you want to do in QuickBooks? We suggest these features based on uh, what we know about your business. Your selections help us create your setup checklist. So again, these probably don't have a big impact on your books, but they're going to give you a checklist, right? So that it's not just because they want internal information about you. They're going to give you a valuable checklist that's going to help you. It's, it's not very helpful checklist, I don't feel like, but in any case. So send and track invoices. Yes. Track and received expenses. We'll say, okay, manage and pay bills. Yeah. Track my team's time. Maybe track sales. Maybe track mileage. Probably not accept payments. Okay. Well, that means they're going to try to set me up with a, they're going to try to get me on their checking account, but get business banking, create estimates or quotes. Maybe manage inventory maybe manage sales tax maybe so again this pro if you don't check off one of these and you're going to do one of those it's not like the end of the world i think this is basically internal documentation for quickbooks and they're going to give you a cool checklist but they okay so want extra help we'll get you up and running so uh you can hop on a 45 minute call with an expert to get guidance on what you'd like to get done learn how to connect your banks set up a chart of accounts send and track invoices manage and pay bills automate your tasks so no that's cool that they have that but no we're not going to do that so now uh we'll be able to accept payments track expenses okay uh uh, get paid with invoices. So set up online uh, set up online payments to, to let customers pay you on the spot. So this is basically QuickBooks trying to upsell us basically to use their banking system uh, in order to and one of the benefits of that is it makes it a little bit nicer to, to integrate into your invoices so that they can click on the invoice and have a payment. Uh, so it is pretty neat, but we're not going to do that. We still can connect bank feeds, even if we're not banking basically with Intuit or QuickBooks, the owner of QuickBooks. So I'll skip that and uh, link your account and see everything in one place. Securely link your bank and credit card. Select the accounts you'd like to bring in. See what your cash flow looks like. So we're going to be connecting our bank accounts, but I'm not going to do it here because I want to show that you can connect the bank feeds within QuickBooks. You don't have to do it through this interview process. And I almost think it's better not to so I can see what's the, the system looks like what's in the chart of accounts before I start doing that. So I'm going to say skip. 
How do you track your receipts today? Saving receipts is an important part of running your business. Uh, you'll need them for tax time and for good record keeping. So notice uh, I think QuickBooks really likes this receipt thing because they're, they're, uh, they're, they're geeks over there. Their application makers made this cool phone app that takes pictures of receipts and whatnot. But in reality, I don't think it's that useful for a lot of uh, people because everything's online right now. So you have a nice audit trail of everything you paid for because you paid for it with, a, with an electronic transfer these days. So so any case, I... I save whatever. This is internal information for them. I save paper and digital receipts and so on. So let's go next. Uh, keep your receipt and maximize deductions. So get the free QuickBooks mobile app with your subscription. Snap your receipt and bills uh, then will match it to your books. Download the QuickBooks mobile app. So this is the thing. They really hyped this up when it first came out. And it's pretty neat that it does that. But... Like I say, uh, I don't think a lot of people are doing their books with receipts now because you're not like using paper checks anymore. You're using electronic transfers and the electronic transfers have an audit trail that's way better than if you were writing like a check in, or paying someone with cash, in which case you would need the receipts. So in any case, uh, you're on your way. So it's pooling the information, personal, dot, dot, let's go. Building the checklist. It's doing everything. Let's see it. Let's see what you what you got here. So there's our file, and here's the fancy checklist. So they didn't they weren't gathering just information about you for their own for their own data file. They made this amazing checklist with that information, which is going to make things easier. So uh, we probably won't spend a lot of time on the checklist. It might be helpful, but you know, there's that. Uh, what they did set up for us is the chart of accounts. So, so if we if we uh, look over here, we have uh, the chart of accounts. So, if I go into wait a sec, let's go in the transactions, and then on on the right we've got the chart of accounts. So they gave this massive chart of accounts. So here we have that. All right. So a quick quick note on the navigation here. So this can look overwhelming. If, you, if it's like the first time that you've logged into a, a QuickBooks. So just realize that the basic outline is gonna be the middle part of the screen is where something is going to be displayed. And then you're gonna, you're gonna navigate through the screen either with those foundational items, which are up in the cog. So when you're setting up things like your settings, your managing of the users, and you're entering your lists, which include you could get to the chart of accounts here and the items here and other types of lists. These are the foundational things that you need to lay down before you do the day-to-day -to -day, uh, -day input. And then when you do the day-to-day -day input, typically that is done with forms. All the forms are typically located under the plus button, broken out by cycle, customer cycle, otherwise known as revenue cycle, sales cycle, maybe accounts receivable cycle, the vendor cycle, otherwise known as the expenses cycle, possibly the accounts payable cycle, the purchases cycle, and then you've got in essence payroll within here, the payroll cycle, and those are the major cycles. And we can generate the forms here. The forms are the things that create the actual transactions. So whenever we enter transactions that construct the financial statement, we use the forms noting the primary goal of the bookkeeping process is number one, creating the financial statements and related reports, the major financial statements being the balance sheet, the income statement, otherwise known as the profit and loss. And then number two, communicating as we do our transactions with the people we do business with and trying to make that communication as smooth as possible, that being the customers, the vendors and the team. So we enter the transactions here, we communicate with people that we do business with in the centers, what I would call centers, the sales center, otherwise known as the customer center, the expenses center, otherwise known as uh, the vent or the vendor center or the expenses center. And then if we had payroll, we would be dealing with the payroll center in here, although you might set up payroll in multiple different ways. You might have an external payroll provider or something like that. Now with the bank feeds, 
they're mainly going to be managed in this transaction tab. So within the transaction tab, we've got uh, the bank transactions that we will deal with. And then we have our chart of accounts in here as well, our rules and our bank reconciliations. So that's a, a quick overview of the layout. Now you also have some things to just note if you're not used to like online software, web-based software. If I hold down control and scroll in, I'm on uh, a normal Windows, a Windows computer. I'm not sure exactly how it works on a Mac, I would, but I'm assuming you'd have a similar zoom in. Then you can zoom in to the, to, to the screen, right? Now, as you zoom in and out, notice that the shape of the screen and the icons on it will change. So just if you're looking at it at a phone, you can, you can go on a tablet. A lot of people do their work on their phone right now, which seems crazy to me because my eyes are, would never be good enough to do, or, or at least not now are good enough to do that. So, but uh, just note that then the icons are going to be different. If you're working on a phone, you obviously know this, uh, I would assume, <laughs> but, but if you're coming from the desktop version, that might be something new to you. And then, and then note that if I want to have two screens open, two tabs at the same time, I can right click on the tab up top and then uh, duplicate the tab, duplicate the tab. So now I can have two tabs open. Once we get some data in the system, my typical setup process will be to open the reports on the left-hand side, have the major balance sheet and income statement reports open in tabs to the right, and then have my data input tab on the tab to the left. That means that I can work on all three tabs at the same time, but when I go to a new tab, such as refreshing the reports, I need to refresh the screen. So if I was to run a report, there's nothing in it because we don't have any data in it as of this point in time. But if there was, I'd run it every time I go back on over here and refresh the data every time I do a new uh, data input. Also note that you might also want to work on the QuickBooks uh, sample company file, the test drive, which already has data in it from time to time, even as you're in your own practice file or in this file. Now, I don't think you can really log in. Sometimes there's an issue logging into the, the test drive when you're already logged into your own file. So to get around that, if you want the two open at the same time, is that you can use another browser, such as using Chrome versus Edge Fire versus Firefox, or whatever browser you are in, there's usually an incognito window, right? So I could select uh, the item up top and I have, in this case, I have a new private window that I can open and then I can search for QuickBooks Online Test Drive. And I think it's easiest just to type into the search. I'm looking for Intuit.com uh, to have it in the results, test drive, Intuit. So that looks like the one. And then I want to open this up. This is available in English, uh, Canada English. So I would like the US one, but I'm going to just open this one for now just so we can see it. And so then it makes me pick the buses, buses. I am not a robot. And then we can have the two files should be able to be open at the same time. And if I go to the reports on this file, then of course, there should be something in them already. And if I go to the balance sheet, there we have it. So now I can have these two things side by side. And if I want to practice data input over here and not mess up my current, which, which is kind of like my company file or mir mirroring my company file, I can do that. So note there's two kinds of practice files we have here then. We've got the 30 day trial, great if we can get access to it or the student file to have a sandbox that has nothing in it practicing the setup process, the starting process, connecting to the bank feeds, uploading the bank transactions and making the rules for the bank feeds and whatnot. Uh, and then we have the sample company file, which is great because it already has that stuff set up. And then you can deconstruct from the end result, the reports back down to the source document. And then you can also you know, practice data input with a file that already has the foundational items set up. So we'll continue on with our practice problem next time.